invitation to be here tonight. I'm Sam Sloan. I am the state senator. I'm running for re-election. You're here tonight because we now have a piece of Kaimaki in the newly reapportioned district number nine. And it goes all the way from Hawaii Kai to Diamond Head, a little bit of Kapahulu, uh, mostly Kuleo'o and, and Aina Haina as well. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and about my platform, uh, for those of you that, that don't know me. You know, I'm not a politician, I am a business person. I graduated from the University of Hawaii back in the day when there were 6,000 students at Manoa and there were more cows, chickens, and goats on the campus. There were no lawyers, so it was a better time. <laughs> I've seen a lot of changes, like you, some of them good, some of them not so good. The problem is, a lot of people feel that other people are making the decisions for them. But you know what? It still is our destiny. We still have the power, we have the choice. But not when 43% of the people go to vote, as they did in the primary election. I know a lot of people say, oh, can't make a difference, my one vote doesn't make a difference, no sense. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy, because if you don't vote, it will come through. If you do vote, I can't guarantee you that you'll make a change right away, but I do guarantee you that it's important for different voices and different alternatives. Now look at me. The last two years, I've been the only Republican in the state Senate of 25 senators. And even though Mr. Caldwell gave me that gracious offer, and I know the Speaker and the State Senator probably have Democrat Party cards, I'll continue to be what I am, and that is an individual. I have worked with Senator Ihara on a number of projects, and will again Monday when we're on the UH Senate Investigating Committee. Uh, I've worked certainly with uh, Council Member Kobayashi, who I was just telling her tonight, I watched part, part of that budget hearing. Um, if you like root canals, and you like a lot of pain, <laughs> watch the city council budget hearing. And they ask the same question over and over again, but they don't get any answers. <clears throat> and you know, some people criticize us in the legislature, but at least we get an answer. We don't always get the right answer, but we get an answer. But there's no conclusion in the city council. Oh, and by the way, in case you didn't know, I'm opposed to the rail, to the fixed <laughs> guideway steel on steel elevated train to nowhere. <laughs> and in May of last year, I joined seven other organizations and individuals and became one of the plaintiffs in the lawsuit against this rail. It's not because we're against transportation alternatives. I want transportation alternatives. I want clean energy. But you've got to have it at a cost that you can afford. Does the name Greece mean anything to anybody? California. How do you think they got that way? They got that way because they're out of control in terms of spending. We want this and this and this and this. If you're a parent like I am, I have four sons. Four sons, in fact. My youngest son is going to UH right now. But if you're a parent, you can't always say yes. You can't always be a buddy. Sometimes you've got to stand up and you've got to say no. And these are the reasons why. Now, in terms of having input in the rail, you're not going to have any input. The deal is sealed. You're going to get steel on steel, which is the oldest technology, the most expensive form of rail transit. You're going to have a blight on our environment. But mostly, as Councilmember Kobayashi said, we can't afford it. It's $5 billion for construction of the rail, plus operation, plus maintenance. But the full system right now is $9.03 billion. And Councilmember asked the, the financial head of heart today for the numbers about contingency. Do we have contingency? Do we don't have contingency? They don't know, and they're not telling. You can't do that. A business person, and that's my background, small business, you can't operate on that basis. In a family, you can't operate that way either. So here's my point of being in the legislature. 
I think that we need an alternative voice and someone who is willing to stand up and take tough decisions. My record is open. All of the positions and the votes that I've taken are available to anybody. I'm easily accessible. Now, you're not going to agree with me on everything. I'd be scared to death if you did. But you know where I stand, and I try to be very consistent. And you know everybody's running around this election. I'm bipartisan. I'm a centrist. I'm this, I'm that. I look at the bills. If they're good bills, if we need them, I'll work with anybody. When I go to work every day and I know that I'm outnumbered 24 to 1, it's kind of a, a sobering experience. But my colleagues have been fair. We have good discussions. We debate the issues. And that's good for you. That's what you've got to see. You've got to see people arguing, why are they for it? And if you ask them a question, by golly, you better get an answer. Because too long we've missed opportunities in Hawaii. Hey, look, I'm bullish on Hawaii, on the future of Hawaii, but we've missed so many opportunities. We've had capital overfly us from the east and capital overfly us from the west. We talk a great deal. We have studies and we have commissions and we do all the things except listen to the people that know how to create jobs and create tables. They tell us. We invite them down to the legislature. And after they're finished, we say, Thank you very much. And now we'll do what we always do. Tax and spend. Along with Representative Marimoto. By the way, Representative Marimoto is not only good for your community. She's good for every community. We're all going to miss her. But she'll stay active. She fought the fight against taxing your pensions. I joined in that in the Senate. We have already proposals from a new tax review commission. Our taxes aren't high enough. We're third highest in the nation. And all of these taxes haven't gotten us better opportunities for our kids or for our old people. Oh, by the way, I'm an old people now. I made it to Kapuna status. I'm so excited. I'm so proud. The best days of Hawaii are ahead, but only if we make the right decisions and only if we listen to all voices and then act. That's what we've got to do. And that's why I'm proud and honored to be your state senator. And I pledge to continue doing what I have been doing, to listen to people, but more importantly, to act. And finally, I would say this. A lot of people say things, but when you're voting this time, and it is important, I do believe that we are at a turning point in our nation and in our community. When you vote, please do me a favor. Don't ask the candidate where they went to high school. <laughs> Don't ask them who they're married to or going out with. Don't ask them what position on the football team or volleyball team they were on. Ask them about taxes. Ask them about workers' compensation. Ask them about health care. And get an answer that satisfies you. We are proud to live in a beautiful state, but we're not going to get by on beauty alone. We have to work hard. We can do it. Our greatest resources our greatest potential are ahead of us. I would hope that you would consider supporting my re-election. I'm Sam Sloan. I thank you very much. And a lot.